Agency for Railways. I'm Cyril Martin, Communication Officer, and I will be your moderator today. It's a real pleasure to see you again. Today, we will discuss the progress on safety and interoperability across the final report on safety and interoperability published at the beginning of June on the ERAS website, and that you'll be able to download at any time during this webinar by, by flashing this QR code that you're now seeing on the screen. Without further ado, I will now introduce our speakers. After an introduction by Joseph Doppelbauer, the executive director of the agency, Torben Holvad, Francesco Rotoli, and Giacomo Potenza, all working in the analysis and monitoring units at ERA, will present the main highlights and findings of this new report. Then we'll have the pleasure to listen to Nicolaos Urbanis, head of unit transport statistics at the European Commission, DG Eurostat, Peter Sisolak, the Head of Traffic Management and Train Performance Management at RailNet Europe. And last but not least, Anna Vogli, Policy Officer in the Register Team in the Analysis and Monitoring Unit of ERA. Thanks to all of you for being here today. A last word to say that this event is being recorded and will be available on our YouTube channel and website in the coming days. Without further ado, I now give the floor to the executive director of ERA, Joseph de Paul Bauer. He couldn't be with us today, so he, he recorded a message for, for us. We will now launch the video. Thank you, Cyril. Also from my side, welcome to our webinar about the progress on railway safety and interoperability in Europe and the importance of data sharing. The analysis of the progress with safety and interoperability is a key element in ERA's continuous effort to better understand the situation of European railways and its evolution of time in terms of safety and interoperability. The data can be used to identify areas for improvement towards reaching a more efficient and effective railway system for all citizens in Europe, the single European railway area. Finally, they represent an important source of information for decision making at the EU and member state level. Within this context, more non-aggregated data would help in depicting even better the current state of affairs by understanding more clearly how safety is managed at operator's level. The COVID-19 pandemic has had a major impact on the transport sector, particularly in the aviation sector, but also in the railway sector, especially in terms of railway passenger volumes. The pandemic could also potentially permanently change travel behavior and traffic patterns. 
let us all make the best of this period by carefully analyzing the data of the report in order to align and to improve our future actions. The methodology used for the analysis proposes indicators for outcomes as well as outputs and underlying processes and conditions. Those indicators are primarily drawn from the data reported to ERA under the European legal framework. However, several indicators rely on non-statutory data provided voluntarily by national bodies and other stakeholders. We warmly thank the national safety authorities, Eurostat, RailNet Europe, the European Climate, Infrastructure and Environment Executive Agency and other data providers for their active contribution to this report. European railways remain among the safest in the world, with major accidents with five or more fatalities becoming increasingly rare and significant accidents decreasing in recent years. However, the overall cost of railway accidents remains high and progress has also been very uneven across the EU member states, with a significant variation in safety levels. The railway community must continue the work relentlessly and tirelessly to improve railway safety. We can never afford to be complacent. Unlike European aviation and maritime industries, railways still have not implemented a systematic and comprehensive EU-wide safety occurrence reporting scheme, which would enable not only to learn efficiently from major accidents, but also from incidents without victims. Several areas in which safety has been stagnating recently, such as level crossing, collisions, derailments or rolling stock fires would particularly benefit from a wider information sharing. However, we should not only count accidents and incidents. The agency has received the mandate to draft common safety methods for assessing the safety levels and safety performance of railway operators at national and union level. When implemented, this should provide an additional angle to assess how safety is managed. Similarly to aviation, a common IT reporting platform should be set up to support the collection and analysis of these new safety data. I invite all railway parties to be strongly committed to enhancing railway safety by rigorously applying a robust safety management system and by implementing a positive railway safety culture. We need the commitment of all players to achieve a sustainable and safe performance across the single European railway area. Our records confirm that we have already come far in terms of improving the interoperability of railways in Europe. However, we are still a long way from reaching our targets in many areas. Although sound progress can be seen in aligning operational frameworks in terms of rules, only modest improvements are visible in making the railway assets interoperable. As a consequence, railways have been unable to increase their model share in the transportation mix in the past decade, despite being the most sustainable mode of transport. At border crossings, the weaknesses in railway interoperability are most visible. In this edition of the report, for the first time, thanks to our valuable collaboration with RailNet Europe, we present new indicators for monitoring cross-border rail traffic volumes, transfer time and punctuality at border sections, which may provide an indication of the seamlessness of international rail connections. We plan to assess the evolution of these new indicators in the coming years in order to further monitor the development of rail interoperability across Europe. We all need to enhance our efforts, in particular in the area of railway data interoperability. High quality, interoperable and open railway data are essential in connecting the rail business actors across borders and with other modes of transport.
After years of building single-purpose databases, our focus must now shift towards synergies enabled by connected data and underlying IT systems, which can improve rail competitiveness. To significantly improve the current incompleteness and inaccuracy of data in certain error registers, I invite all parties involved to boost their efforts towards achieving better data quality. The ongoing digital revolution offers both inspiration and potential solutions. The European Commission strategy on sustainable and smart mobility sets out the direction. We would like to emphasize the importance of a modal shift towards green transport and logistic chains. Rail is the most sustainable, affordable and effective transport mode to meet the goal of decarbonisation and it could be the backbone of European transport. However, trains need to run alongside other modes of transport in order to carry goods and people in the most effective way. Such a multimodal approach requires the seamless integration of the transport modes facilitated by digital technologies. In addition, our new approach to the revision of TSIs should enable ERA and the railway sector to allocate resources more efficiently to enhance international standardization and to react rapidly to emerging technologies to considerably shorten their time to market. Finally, as part of its mandate under the Forest Railway Package, since 2019, ERA has been issuing vehicle authorizations, granting single safety certificates and deciding on European rail traffic management system trackside approvals across the whole of the EU through entirely paperless procedures. Our experience with this new role is overall positive and promising for the future. May I now give the floor to Torben, Francesco and Giacomo for their presentation. Good afternoon to everyone. Um, we are presenting the last, the latest findings from the uh, Biennial report on safety and interoperability. Uh, it is one of the tasks of the agency to monitor the overall safety performance of the Union Railway System, the safety and interoperability performance. Uh, the latest Biennial report was published um, at the beginning of June of this year and uh, um, it is very important to uh, highlight in this context the great importance of the uh, data information sharing, uh, the collaboration with the other institutions like Eurostat, RailNet Europe, but also the big contribution of the error register team in this, in this report. Um, if we can go to the next slide, please. Um, we, well, this is just a general overview on the safety uh, part of the report. Uh, we will see uh, with the specific find figures that the significant accidents and also resulting casualties have decreased uh, since 2010. Um, although the positive trend at the European level, anyway, the cost of railway accidents remain quite high. The decrease in significant accidents uh, has been mainly driven by external accidents, not internal ones, which, uh, which appear more stable in the last three years. And then large differences in safety levels still exist between uh, European member states. Uh, something that should be kept in mind is that the um, year 2020 was uh, strongly hit by the COVID pandemic that of course um, has um, had a lot of effects also on the transport sector. In particular, uh, the total train kilometers uh, in Europe decreased by around 10%, similarly to the freight on kilometers, while the passenger kilometers uh, has decreased even um, uh, well, uh, over higher quantity, over 40%. Um, regarding instead uh, the interoperability, uh, interoperability is progressing uh, in Europe, but the progress uh, are slow and uh, uneven. Um, there is a good align, uh, alignment um, regarding rules and procedures, while the uh, progress is low uh, in the area of rolling stock and also infrastructures. Uh, for the key findings, uh, we can highlight that the rail model shell is uh, stagnant. 
marketing. Uh, we prepared new indicators, uh, trying to uh, to follow, to um, explore uh, uh, the seamlessness uh, of cross-border traffic, so uh, and, uh, across Europe. Um, the degree of implementation of tap and tough technical uh, specification for interoperability is progressing uh, quite slowly. The number of national rules uh, for vehicle authorization has seen an impressive decrease over the past six years, but uh, it has flattened uh, since 2019, also because potentially removable rules are becoming scarce. And that, uh, the deployment, uh, deployment of the uh, ERTMS uh, at European level has been slow so far. Finally, Non-application of technical specification of, um, uh, for interoperability uh, remain, uh, remain a common practice uh, as it is visible from the number of derogation from, uh, from from the Commission. Of course, you can find much more insights uh, in the report. And uh, but here, I um, together with Giacomo, I will present just some of the main uh, figures uh, for the safety interoperability part. Regarding the safety uh, part, uh, these figures shows that the, the number of significant accidents uh, and also um, fatalities and serious injuries are um, decreasing uh, steadily since 2010. 2010 20 uh, has the lowest value ever. Of course, we have to keep in mind that 2020 was characterized and hit uh, strongly by COVID. Um, anyway, the trend in the last decade is quite uh, positive, is decreasing. If we go to the next slide, please. Uh, although the positive trend at European level, we should keep in mind that <coughs> The, this uh, decrease in significant accidents uh, has been mainly driven by external accidents, meaning accidents to persons and level crossing accidents. If we look at collisions, derailments, uh, fire lorry stock and other accidents, so the so-called internal accidents, the trend is uh, uh, most stable in the last years. So the trend is uh, um, particularly decreasing for, uh, uh, for external accidents, which uh, are also higher in numbers anyway. Uh, secondly, uh, if we uh, move to the next slide, please. Uh, what we can notice is that uh, the, both the employee fatality rates, but also the passenger fatality rates, after a strong decrease um, uh, until 2018, in the last three years, they present, they show an increasing, a slightly increasing trend. In particular, for the passenger, uh, we can notice that in 2019, there is a reduction. There was a reduction in 2020 compared to 2019, sorry. There was a reduction in passenger fatalities, but taking in account uh, the big decrease in passenger kilometers due to the restriction of mo mobility uh, for the COVID pandemic, in reality, uh, the passenger fatality rate uh, has increased in 2020 compared to 2019. So practically, uh, these graphs show um, that both the rates are uh, are um, slightly increasing. Uh, if another observation uh, is related to the big difference that is still clear um, among the safety levels of member states. Uh, this graph in particular focus on the fatalities per million train kilometers, uh, and we can um, see clearly that uh, there is a cluster of at least 11 member states on the right side with uh, um, a value of a, a railway fatality rates well above the European average. And additionally, we can also notice that the difference between countries with the lowest and the highest value uh, is quite uh, significant. There is a tenfold difference. So really, the safety um, levels across member states uh, vary a lot. This is also clear from the next slide that is focusing on the level crossing accidents. In particular, uh, the graph on the left side shows the number of significant accidents, fatalities and serious injuries um, uh, at level crossing. And after uh, a constant stable trend since 2016, in 2020, uh, we can observe a reduction in level crossing accidents and re uh, related casualties. Anyway, we should keep in mind that uh, this uh, reduction uh, is probably driven by the COVID restriction more than by uh, improvement in safety levels. On the right side, instead, uh, we have also represented um, the number of uh, level crossing accidents, uh, comparing them with the number of um, 
uh, passive level crossings. Why? Because in reality, uh, the number of level crossing, the type of protection, and also the number of significant accidents vary quite a lot among, uh, across Europe, among member states. So practically, this graph shows that um, uh, there is this big variation and also that there is a quite positive relationship between the number of level crossing, uh, passive level crossing, so without protection, and the number of accidents. Uh, this is not really the case for some member states like UK, Sweden, Norway and Finland uh, presenting quite low, uh, well, um, compared to the other member states, lower number of accidents despite the high number of um, um, passive level crossing and uh, these cases will be further analyzed uh, to understand the specific situation. So this is all from the safety part. Now I leave the floor to Giacomo for the main findings and figures on the interoperability part. Thank you, Francesco. And uh, we move to the second part of our report, uh, which is the monitoring of uh, the evolution of interoperability. Uh, here in this uh, slide, uh, we can see our, our figures about uh, uh, railway uh, traffic volumes for uh, both uh, uh, freight on the left and uh, passenger on the right. We can see that in general, the uh, passenger has steadily increased uh, over the last years uh, uh, and uh, in general with a very stagnating uh, results uh, both for the share of uh, domestic or international uh, and uh, uh, in, in the case of freight with uh, um, uh, uh, decreasing model share unfortunately which is of course going against uh, the uh, EU uh, targets. We see in the passenger side uh, the very serious drop uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic that we were discussing above. Uh, and uh, in general, uh, these charts are a mixture of sources as, as noted in the, in the bottom of the, of the slides. Uh, then uh, uh, if we can uh, move to the next slide, uh, this is related uh, to uh, sort of a pilot uh, exercise that we decided to run this year. In the two years ago in our report, we said that we wanted to improve the monitoring of interoperability with new indicators. And in our in the current version of 2022 report, we have a number of new indicators regarding to interoperability. Here I present one, which is the related to the what's so called seamlessness of rail traffic. We thought that a measure of interoperability could be uh, related to how easy it is to cross border and how uh, reliable it is, especially in terms of uh, time. And here we see, uh, thanks to the data provided by RNE, on the left, uh, the difference for freight trains of uh, between planned and uh, real transfer time. And we see that uh, the uh, freight trains, especially the results are more disappointing, meaning that the the real tra transfer time is uh, in most cases higher than uh, the planned one. Uh, in general, uh, this exercise is a first, so it's, uh, a, I would say, a pilot that we will uh, try to develop further in the next editions of the report, where we hope to have more uh, border crossing sections that can be uh, monitored with reliable data from uh, r and &E. At the moment, uh, we have only a, a selection, therefore we cannot uh, dr drive to conclusions related to uh, EU level results, but we hope in the future to have the possibility to monitor the evolution of uh, different borders over time. All these borders are, are different. They have a different vo volume of traffic. Some are uh, mixed traffic, some are only passengers, some are only freight. Uh, but in general, uh, what we can see in the results for this year, which is just a snapshot, is that overall uh, punctuality of freight trains is worse than the one of uh, passenger trains. If you can move to the uh, next slide, uh, this, uh, this is uh, again from our selection of indicators is related to EFTMS uh, track side deployment. Uh, we know that at EU level deployment has been uh, so far quite slow and uh, varies a lot between member states. On the left, we can see uh, the results from our uh, register, the RINF, the register of infrastructure showing the uh, length of railway lines equipped with ETCS. This includes, and that's the ERA monitoring task, 
the entire rail network. So all states that are uh, deploying uh, ERTMS on uh, all lines that they have, and this is the reason why certain states have very high values, given that they decided to opt for a full deployment of ERTMS, uh, such as the case of Belgium. Uh, on the right side, uh, we have uh, an overview of data from the European Commission, which is monitoring the deployment of the RTMS along the uh, core network corridors. And uh, we can see here as well that uh, deployment is, uh, is slow. Uh, however, things seem to be uh, improving given the number of uh, uh, kilometers under procurement, uh, which will come into service in the coming years. We see this from, uh, as our director said, uh, the application for the track side approvals that the agency uh, is uh, receiving. Uh, another uh, overview of uh, how international and how interoperable our railways are, are becoming is from the next slide, where uh, we have an overview of the safety certificates. Clearly, uh, safety certificates and uh, single safety certificates, which is the new denomination uh, following the uh, also the, the, for the fourth railway package, our records show a total of uh, 214, uh, so you previously called Part B safety certificates certificates which are valid in more than one member states and uh, 33 were issued by ERA for uh, international operations. Uh, we can see uh, that again this is a new task for ERA since the fourth review package. Uh, in general we have more freight services that are uh, registered to be operating internationally than uh, passenger. Here with this indicator we wish to continue monitoring in the future the evolution of the market, how the market is become more international by how many safety certificates and single safety certificates have an area of use which cover uh, more than one country. <clears throat> and then uh, my uh, last slide is uh, related to <clears throat> the other uh, authorizing task of ERA, which is related to vehicle authorization. So this uh, shows that in general, uh, the vehicle authorization issued by ERA have been increasing uh, in 2021, which is the latest data we have. Uh, mostly, uh, we authorize the wagons uh, beside the logos and uh, train sets. Uh, more than 1,040 authorizations uh, were uh, for uh, more than 13,000 vehicles, and they concern an area of operation in multiple countries. So here again, it's uh, a way in our interoperability monitoring to see from uh, authorizations that we issue how the market is becoming more international, meaning how many applicants are asking for authorizations that concern more than one member state. This are again, is again one of our indicators to monitor interoperability through a number of aspects uh, that we hope you will find uh, insightful in our report uh, and uh, I invite you to all uh, download it. Back to you, Cyril. Well, thank you very much, Giacomo, Francesco and Torben for this very detailed and instructive presentation. So we've seen that safety and interoperability in Europe are progressing, but still there is space for improvement, particularly in some areas. So now I'll turn to our speakers and to start with Nicolaus Urbanis. Let me recall our audience that you are the head of unit transport statistics of DG Eurostat of the European Commission. Dear Nicolaus, first question to you. The, the figures on rail traffic are still far from the Commission objectives. Could I ask your general remarks about these traffic trends shown in the presentation? For example, any important or main takeaways? Please, Nicolas. Thank you very much, Cyril. Thank you for inviting me in this uh, webinar. I just have three slides, and with these three slides, I would like to, to try to uh, look more in detail into statistical data to, to be able to each one of you to, to find an answer if possible, to your question. Uh, indeed, if we look at uh, the model shift, uh, the statistics show that the share of ton kilometers of goods transported by inland modes, uh, meaning road, rail and inland waterways, is stable in the last 10 years. And road accounts for uh, three quarters of the ton kilometers, while rail just for a fifth. Uh, however, if we want to analyze better what is behind and how each mode evolves, 
uh, we need to look at the specificities uh, of the of, of the statistics. So if we, if we move to my second slide, uh, here you can see that um, uh, the the transport of containers uh, show a completely different picture. In fact, rail is the most important means of transport has the the main the, the most the highest share uh, of uh, transport uh, of containers, uh, and in addition, it is increasing. Uh, in the last five years, is increasing. Uh, on the contrary, road uh, covers a much smaller part of uh, ton kilometers uh, for the transport of containers. So. One, uh, before drawing a conclusion on what is, uh, let's say, the uh, what is the overall trend in terms of share between inland modes, I think one has to have a better uh, view of the detailed statistics. If we move to the to the to my last uh, slide uh, to to understand better what is happening in other modes, uh, we can see that uh, as far as road transport is concerned, long distance. Uh, transport of goods by road has increased and then decreased and currently is below its level of 2015. However, uh, the shorter distances, uh, which are probably less accessible to rail, uh, the, the road transport is increasing. So if we look at all this together, and if you also take into account that certain goods, for example, mail and pass parcels, uh, have increased. They, they are uh, the volume of the goods transported uh, for these categories has increased by 50% uh, in the last uh, five years. Uh, I think that uh, you can very well understand uh, the difficulty in in seeing spectacular uh, changes on the total uh, share of rail comparing to to road and uh, inland waterways. In conclusion, I think that the the potential and the specificities of rail comparing to other modes of transport should be carefully evaluated, looking at detailed statistics, uh, detailed model statistics, uh, if you want to make a sound analysis and really uh, answer the question, uh, did we fail to meet the, the objectives or not? Well, thank you, Nikolaus, for your answers. And now I would like to ask the opinion of RailNet Europe, Peter Sisolak. Let me recall our audience that you are the head of traffic management and train performance management at RailNet Europe. In this edition of the Biennial Report, thanks to the collaboration with RNE, indicators on cross-border train services were presented, such as the number, transfer time and punctuality of passenger freight trains at selected cross-border sections. So, Peter, could you please describe how and from where data are collected, describing also the main obstacles, difficulties, in collecting and sharing more reliable data to monitor the progress in cross-border traffic services? And second part of my question, how important are the collaborations with ERA and also other European and international institutions for providing detailed and reliable rail figures across Europe. Please, Peter, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you. Good afternoon to all of you. Uh, so coming to the first question, in general, if we want to assess the train performance on an international level, probably for the European level, we must uh, have the train <coughs> train on covering the concrete one from the origin to destination of all involved networks. Usually, these data are available on the on the national level. Uh, so, these data from the domestic system, from the IND domestic system, are centralized in the RNA train information system, uh, where okay. So, these data are centralized in the train information system. And the data exchange is based on the top top TSI uh, format definition of significantly simplified in the whole process. Having the national the data in the in the TIS, the further procedure can start checking the quality of these data and uh, 
to reach the reliable and comprehensive international train around from the origin to a destination. In some cases, uh, simply say creating the international train around from national data. So we are uh, putting together the national values and creating the international train data, but it is not always necessary. If the R is placing an international harmonized pass order, uh, they also get an harmonized international pass order and allocated the data are usually ready for direct processing. However, not always this approach is taken and this procedure, special procedure needs to be done on the r and le level together with all involved experts and with supporting the freight, freight corridors also. Uh, so what we are doing with the data, we are we are doing the linking, or linking of the trains at the borders and this procedure help us to create a complete international train run from the origin to the destination. Uh, in, in other reports, we are considering around 250 uh, different uh, borders between 25 different IMs. And uh, sometimes it's necessary for each border to define the special scenario and assess the uh, data uh, quality. Uh, sometimes there are also some deficiencies or, or in the train time definition, but we already have a solution on the case level to work with uh, that. Uh, so in relation to your question, uh, it relates to data provision. Uh, significant progress has been done uh, to provide the data to EU authorities and uh, EU associations uh, when uh, when the simplified procedure is approved by the RE uh, members, and the, the, in the very short time we are able uh, to, to provide you uh, with the data, it's not necessary to have the special approval from, uh, from the members. In relation, what we are doing is sharing more data. Uh, so, uh, what, we, what, we, what we did in the past, uh, uh, the re recent activity was uh, the we read the commitment of the members to provide all freight trains data by the end of this year, so we should have in our this system all these data. Uh, within the data quality, uh, within the uh, digital train 1.0 project, uh, we were able to include also the uh, terminals and port into the data exchange, and based on the interest, we are able to exchange data uh, with them. Uh, Currently, ongoing work is related, uh, is related to the train composition and the train composition message significantly help us to improve the data quality. And then we are able also to use this information to link the trains at the border and also uh, start providing the reporting uh, services on the wagon level. Uh, part of your question was also related to the data quality improvements. Uh, here, a very, a very important step was done in 2020 uh, when RNE uh, members approved the data quality strategy, and uh, the sub, uh, subsequent uh, uh, three projects which, uh, which help us to, to read the goal of this strategy. Uh, what was already prepared are two, two new handbooks. First one is uh, defining a form of data provision. And the second one is on data provision and quality monitoring. Uh, so the process of uh, defining the KPIs and starting the regular monitoring uh, starts uh, from the beginning of the next year. In addition, uh, in, uh, in the scope of the data quality, uh, the peace declaration uh, uh, was uh, prepared and commitments to the RNE members was taken and it is focused on the exchange of the data and the position of the piece in this exchange and also involvement of the terminals and cooperation of the RMC with them to extend the number of the data. So this relates to the first question and uh, to the, uh, the answer to your second question, uh, where you asked about how important the collaboration with, uh, with the European Railway Agency and the EU institution is important. So. Uh, what we what we can say is that uh, if you want to succeed as a whole sector, we need the goals, and these goals will be smart. They are, you know, and what means the smart means that it should be also measurable. 
The overall monitoring of the railway performance is done based on the data, which are not always aggregated in one place. Uh, if we found the source of the data, we are still not always able to present them in a correct way. The close cooperation between the source of the data and the presenting or evaluating subject is crucial. The very accurate and reliable data can be presented in a wrong way, and it could lead to an incorrect decisions. Here, the cooperation between the involved subject from the source represented by the IMS via the aggregation and reporting uh, entity, the RME, and also with support of the railway corridor to the evaluator and presenter, as it, as it was presented in the first part of the, the presentation, is an editor. The result of such a cooperation are reliable data, correctly presented and with explanatory power. The benefit is there for the whole sector, presenting the real status, helping to evaluate goals and finally reach higher efficiency of the whole sector. The cooperation also creates a platform for knowledge and best experience exchange, where again, the benefit is for all involved subjects. The cooperation enables to measure and assess the progress of the railway sector in the EU and present the new level and success of measures implementation. Thank you. Thanks really a lot, Peter. Now let's hear the opinion of Anna Vogli, project officer in the register team in the analysis and monitoring unit of ERA. Many of the figures in the report were extracted by internal databases in ERA. Anna, I would like to ask you first, could you briefly describe the main register databases hosted by ERA, focusing on those used to monitor safety and interoperability across Europe? And then second part of my question, what are the main difficulties in collecting and extracting meaningful statistical information from databases created mainly for other purposes? How important in this process is the involvement of national authorities and other railway actors. Please, Anna, the floor is yours. Thank you, Sirian. Good afternoon, uh, everyone. It's always very interesting to see how the data uh, collected in the registers and databases can transform into useful information. Uh, first, I would like to say a few words for the registers. Our main objective for um, the development and uh, maintenance of the registers is to ensure transparency and equal access to the documents for all the railway actors. Uh, the agency acts as the system authority for the registers, but we are always in close cooperation with our stakeholders. We analyze, uh, discuss and decide the specifications of uh, the registers that we develop. We could identify two main scopes for the registers, technical and organization, human, and four different purposes, traceability, planning, operation, and knowledge management. In our uh, register, as uh, you can see also in the slide, uh, we collect uh, uh, elements uh, related to data related to the main components of the railway system. We have information about organizations, signaling, rolling stock, and infrastructure and energy. Um, you can see also on the other side of the slide, the registers, which uh, some of the registers, which monitor safety interoperability across Europe. From uh, them, AERADIS, the European Railway Agency Database of Interoperability and Safety, and RINF, the Register of Infrastructure, provide inputs for the safety and interoperability report. I will focus on ERADIS, which is our oldest public database, uh, because it includes uh, various modules related to safety interoperability. We are collecting data from uh, national authorities on safety certificates, uh, licenses, annual reports, also certificates from other bodies like the notified bodies and the uh, entities in charge of maintenance. You can find also in ERADIS uh, service quality reports and easy declaration 
declarations from uh, railway undertaking and manufacturers. Uh, also, there are integrated some automatic statistics, uh, mainly focused on uh, safety certificates and license. So uh, that was a short uh, description of uh, ERADIS. And uh, in relation to your second question about uh, the challenges, uh, there are many challenges, uh, but I would like to point out three uh, key issues. Uh, the technical aspect, the need to keep our registers up to date with the latest technological developments, which it's not easy, it's uh, difficult, and at the same time, we have our basic outlines and parameters set up in uh, legal acts. Uh, here, it's obvious that we need an agile, flexible system to be able to respond and adapt to the business needs of our stakeholders. Then I will go to the data awareness. In practice, the agency generates a very low percentage of the data that uh, we collect in our register. Most of the data uh, comes from uh, the stakeholders, provided by the stakeholders, and sometimes there, there is a lack of awareness of the importance of the data uh, and the key role it can play for a proper development of the railway business. And then I will come to the last one, which is the data availability, the quality, data quality and disclosure. This point is linked to data awareness. Most of the organizations do not have a systematic approach to data management. That means that uh, in some cases there is not a consistent data quality check or there are delays on the collection and submission of data to our registers. And sometimes they are also reluctant to share some of um, the data that they have, mainly those related to, to safety issues. And you have asked what is the importance of uh, uh, the authorities and uh, also other uh, railway organizations. It's, it's obvious from what I've said that national authorities and uh, railway organizations are key actors in the timely provision of data to our registers. The accurate collection and sharing of data is essential not only for extracting meaningful statistical information like what we have seen today, but it's also crucial for those who rely on our data to make business decisions. And finally, I would like to highlight that you acknowledge uh, the importance of uh, data sharing and reporting culture, and we will engage with the authorities in creating a work stream towards this direction. Thank you. Back to you, Cyril. Thanks a lot, Anna. Thank you very much. Um, now it's time to answer some of the questions that were uh, raised by you, dear attendees, during the during the webinar. And thanks a lot for your uh, several questions. We identified a first question for you, Nikolaus uh, Rubanis. Um, handling so many data for Eurostat should be quite important to have in place procedures and processes to check data quality. Which are the main difficulties or the most common issues in relation to the quality of data? Please, Nicolaus. Well, indeed, uh, it's a very wide uh, question. Um, I think that uh, quality first is uh, a word which reflects accuracy, timeliness, relevance, and therefore for each one of the components of quality there are different procedures. We, we do regular quality reviews of our data uh, and of our statistical system, including the statistical system at national level, to ensure that uh, the user can trust official statistics. Uh, if I come now to a more uh, specific answer on, on rail statistics, I think the timeliness is uh, the aspect of quality which is, uh, let's say, of most importance to us because uh, rail statistics are also very much indicative to the recovery from the COVID crisis. 
and very uh, timely data uh, are of, of very high use to policymakers and users. So this is my um, this is my answer to to quality. Thank you very much, Nikolaus. We have now another question for Peter Sisolak. How the cross-border sections um, to be analyzed were selected? How many cross-border sections of which part of Europe is covered? Are there any possibilities and provisions to further enlarge the area covered by including more cross-border points? So actually that's several questions in one. <laughs> Please, Peter. Thank you very much for the question. So, uh, in the Europe, as I presented, we, uh, our focus is currently on uh, 250 cross border sections, and uh, we are analyzing the data on the both side. What is uh, sometimes, uh, some people call it very strange, uh, it is the fact that if you have, usually, if you are analyzing the border section, you have two, two sides, two items who are providing data. Uh, for uh, for each uh, border border station or border area, and uh, if you have 100% accuracy on the both side, it not always uh, means that you have 100% reliable data. If you are creating uh, creating uh, the the data from uh, from that, our goal is to is to reach the complete complete European natural data quality in a level that uh, to, to provide the reliable reports. So we, we other, our intention is analyze each border on the, on the European network and uh, set up the procedures to improve the data quality to the level to have, have these data, as I mentioned, when reliable and accurate. So for this, the involvement of uh, the expert is pretty high. Uh, other members uh, creating the data quality expert group. Also, the performance working group is cooperating uh, on on that and analyzing analyzing first of all the data which comes in the data quality expert group and the performance working group together with the health stakeholders is analyzing what is the quality and uh, what should be what should be improved. Where are the deficiencies? Also, some of the members created a special initiative. Uh, Circles where quality circles that they are analyzing the borders with the neighbors and trying to, to improve the wider data. Thanks, thanks a lot, Peter, for this for this answer. Thanks a lot. We have another question now for Anna, Anna Vogli, registers team. Have you seen, Anna, any improvement on the data sharing through the agency's registers? Are there any links between the different registers, Anna? Indeed, indeed, we have seen uh, improvements in many levels from the provision of data that it has been improved in comparison to the past, but also in a technical level, uh, as we have created uh, links between register, uh, example of um, the OSS and ERATIS. Now the single safety certificates are issued in OSS and they are published automatically in uh, ERATIS. There are also links between um, uh, EVR and uh, RINF uh, with the ERA TV. However, this is an ongoing process. And also, I said, uh, uh, this is uh, what we are uh, also, uh, this is our vision that uh, we will engage with uh, the authorities in creating a work stream uh, towards uh, data reporting culture. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anna, for this for this reply. We have another question that uh, came in the chat. Um, what are the sanctions applied if a railway stakeholder doesn't share the data with ERA or is late in doing so? Giacomo Francesco, who who wants to reply to that? I can try to to give at least. <clears throat> Uh, the answer from the common safety indicator and the interoperability data that we use. Uh, practically, uh, the common safety indicators 
are, um, um, let's say, defined and also the provision of this data is required uh, by the safety directive. So there is a specific deadline and in general we don't have issue for this mandatory data uh, to collect them and to have them. Uh, regarding the interoperability that we use, let's say the voluntary one, the ones that are not part of register or are not provided by other, um, let's say, um, institutions, um, interoperability data are not mandatory and they are voluntary. So um, usually there is a good collaboration. This year almost all the NSAs provide also this interoperability data, uh, but there is, well, uh, at least from um, my knowledge and my experience, uh, there was never a sanction applied and uh, uh, the collaboration uh, has been quite good uh, so far. So yes. Thank you very much, Francesco. And as usual, we commit to reply to all the questions that uh, we didn't have time to reply live, and the replies will be published online on our website. We are now slowly but surely reaching the end of this webinar. Third, first, let me thank warmly all of our speakers and the colleagues involved in the preparation of this event. I want to thank them not only for their contribution, but also for their enthusiasm and their support. Thank you for your attendance and participation, dear attendees. Before you go, we would be very happy to receive your feedback on this webinar via the QR code you're seeing right now on the screen and that you can flash with your smartphone. We look forward to meeting you again at our upcoming webinar on the 15th of September about future railway mobile communication system. And before that, we would like you to know that ERA will be present at the Connecting Europe Days 2022, formerly known as the 20 Days, organized by the European Commission next week from the 20th of, to the 30th of June in the wonderful city of Lyon in France. If you can, you are more than welcome to come and meet us there at stand number five to learn more about the agency's core activities, the TSI 2022 revision package, key aspects and milestones, and the essential role of railways for achieving multimodality and the decarbonization of transport. In the meantime, and in any case, if you would like to stay updated on our activities, please sign into our database by selecting the button Login on our website page and follow us on our social media accounts, Twitter and LinkedIn. Thank you very much for participating. We wish you a very pleasant afternoon. Take care.